Hey guys, NJ here. So we've got a little beta FPV haul to look at today. Um, this was the source of my interest. I did get in touch with beta FPV and say that I wanted to have a look at this flight controller, um, which is their latest and greatest uh, toothpick board. This is the F4 all-in-one 35 amp burst 40 amp BL Heli 32 running ESCs. Um, and one to six S and it's just incredible that you can get all of that spec wise onto a board that weighs seven grams, which is just nuts. The main reason I wanted to uh, get hold of this flight controller as well, as you guys know, my beloved guitar pick crazy setup. This has had a few change ups, so we're going to be talking about this at a later date, but I needed to replace this board. This is the um, this was actually a review sample of their um, F4 BL Heli S board, but it was the V2 board. They now run the V3, and the reason, the big, the main jump between the V2 and the V3 of that Beta FPV toothpick board was the fact that it um, needed an extra UART because the original one that I've got in here before it became V3 only had the one UART, which I'm using for Crossfire on this little guy, as you can see out the back, the longer antenna. But unfortunately, it meant I couldn't run MSP to my Vista up at the top, um, which is a real pain. It means I'm having to fall back to radio callouts for things like um, RSSI and, and various other bits of information I want to know. Not the end of the world, but I'd rather have uh, that stuff up in the OSD because that's what I'm used to. That's what I prefer. So, yeah, we'll get on to this guy um, a little later. We'll get back to that in another video and where that all is, because I'm really very excited to tell you more about that development uh, and on a new prototype frame that Chris over at Halo has come up with. So we'll get on to that. Um, but uh, yes, today we're looking at this lot. Um, so this Beta FPV board does have, well, it actually has three available UARTs. You have the main uh, UART, which also... Um, is along the same rail as where you'd put in S bus. Um, so you've got the uh, T1 and R1 there on this side. It's very small, so it's going to be tricky for you to, to see. Let me just bring up the diagram here so that I can I can tell you from down this left side. You've got ground five volts S bus TX1 RX1. Uh, then you've got a second ground, a 10 volt out, which is very useful. Um, RX2 and TX2. So there's that second UART what else do we have down this side we've also got the boot button always good that they locate that on the edge um, you've got obviously got the motor pads here uh, motor one motor two motor three and motor four i've noticed they've dropped the through holes for the um for the blocks if you want to use plug-in motors and to be honest with you i think that's a sensible idea when you're dealing with a, a one to six s um flight controller you shouldn't really be running anything that's using you know motors that have plugs on the ends really that's down at the one to 2s kind of level so uh, I, d I don't see the point in i'd rather have that extra real estate for bigger pads uh, to make the soldering a little bit easier um, but yeah you want nice uh, good connections to your phase wires for the motors so i think that's kind of a smart move to be honest with you um, I do always like this though they always add a couple of drop holes here you can see next to the uh, main battery plus and minus in which is great if you want to run direct power to either your choice of VTX or you want to run it to the Vista because obviously that can take one to success it's nice that they've got a couple of extra little holes um, there to, uh, to run that I, I, I appreciate that indeed um, you can see you've got your OSD chip here it's an F4 uh, SMT, uh, STM32 F411 uh, chip on here absolutely perfect um, and then if we has it got shunt no oh yes it does yeah there you go so we've got shunt here so it does do the uh, current sensing as well because that's always something I find that a nice thing to know uh, see what's going on with the current especially during the uh, testing phase so yeah really nice and just crazy 35 amps per channel burst 40 per channel i mean that is that's insane from seven grams and all my beta fpv boards they've all been rock solid even the old early prototype ones never had an issue personally um so yeah i've, I've only got good things to say about this stuff so it is pricey but it is really good stuff however when i spoke to them they said, well, if you're going to have a look at this board and you're going to chuck it in that pod of yours anyway, 
why don't you take a look at some of the other bits we've got uh so i've of course said oh shiny new bits of course i'll take a look um i do like beta fpv stuff so they've sent me this x knight frame of theirs and this is a five inch ultralight um which definitely caught my attention um because i don't think i've ever really built a super light five inch frame um and they did say do you want to do 6s or 4s and i thought well if we're going to go ultra light i think 4s be fine i've got lots of suitable 4s batteries uh for this and i'm not i'm no racer i don't really need to go uh 6s on that i'm sure there'll be videos that will follow of people doing it um but the motors they supplied me to go with that are these new motors here um and these are 1606 2550 kv um so yeah they're going to be i imagine pretty perfect obviously these are being as tiny as they are they're not going to weigh very much i'd imagine i mean they're still substantial in size but for a five inch these are going to be these are going to be pretty awesome i think i'm going to keep things very light um usual nice tight tolerances on the beta fpv stuff standard kind of is this a standard mic no it's not a slightly bigger mounting so you've got the tw this is the 12 mil as opposed to the standard micro so slightly bigger uh base plate on that um but then your standard smaller mounting holes by the looks of things so they did send some props to go with these let me find those there they are and the props they've sent here uh the five inch props are 5125 oh, okay there you go um, let's have a little look inside here and take a, a look at one of these. So when I first glanced at these, I did think maybe it was one of those press on lock kind of things, but it don't, I don't think it is. They've actually got, you can see in here, can you see these little kind of pressing parts. So those go in that then allow you to do that standard bolt mount. Um, so that will line up or I, I would presume with that taken out if you did want to run a more regular five inch motor with the standard size shaft you could do that it looks like these are gem fans i believe let me look yeah they are i can see the gem fan logo can you just see that just make that out there um so with those little center sections pressed in these will mount and these feel these feel like a light prop as well i'll tell you what before we dive in on this frame let's just have a quick look at those weights and see let's see what they say now i did calibrate this guy earlier so it should be pretty accurate uh, let's turn that on that sec right so the motors all those round are 15 grams yeah that's pretty light yeah this this thing's gonna get this is gonna be a little rocket i think um for sure so yeah 15 grams on the motors then what are these props weigh? Because this feels very light as well. 2.8. Well, it's not crazy light, but yeah, it's on the light side. Yeah, that should be uh, should be pretty interesting. I can't say I've flown this prop profile, but it looks pretty good to me. It's the kind of thing I like to see. Always eyeball props and their profile and shape, and it usually gives me a good idea of how well they're going to fly. Because uh, as we all know, there are some pretty stupid designs out there. And they don't always fly very well so those are the props we've had a little look at the motors let's have a look let's just verify that what did they say seven grams on this <laughs> well <laughs> i shall not dare call out beta fpv again <laughs> look at that it literally so does someone sit there with like a micro file and like shave off little bits of of uh of the pcb resin or something just to try and get that to exactly seven can't make this stuff up i mean and this thing is light enough if i blow on it it will actually register you know just just that's how accurate that is that that's hilarious okay well done beta fpv congrats on uh very much call it uh, showing me up when i called you out there okay so this x knight frame again boasting very light specs let's have a little look at what the manual says here 37 grams all up very light uh, 200 millimeter wheelbase uh, and then what else have we got? Oh, we've got nothing there so it's just on this back side and then it looks like it's just a an exploded diagram of where it goes 
like three millimeter impact battery mats, five millimeter impact battery mat. Okay, so you've got some, looks like you've got a plate here for the battery if you want to do that. Fair enough. And then down here, you can see we've got the exploded diagram of how that goes together. So it looks like a couple of plates there sandwiching four arms. And then I did see it mention countersunk screws. Oh, that's countersunk screws, big one for me. I think that's, I hate it when the screw ends touching the battery. It really, really annoys me. I want a completely flat base, uh, hence. Hence why obviously the halo stuff always take these things into consideration, of course. Um, but yeah, that's good news. And then, yeah, I'm sure it said something about press nuts, didn't it? We'll have a look in a sec. Um, yeah, so I mean, it's pretty simple. That's, that's not a, uh, nothing really too complicated there. Yeah, there you go. You can see this has, uh, this has press nuts in there, although they don't appear to be knurled. That's the only thing that perhaps I don't. Uh, the thing is, if they're not knurled and they're very shallow like this, if a press nut starts to spin in the carbon, which it can do, it really depends on the knurling inside um, uh, or on the outside of the nut itself and how it grips into the carbon, the hole that it's going into. If the tolerances are good and the grip is good on the outside of the nut, then that shouldn't spin, but sometimes they do. Um, and when they do, you obviously need to get a set of pliers and get some kind of purchase on those as you screw in the screw or the bolt into there. Um, and when they've got no knurling on the outside and they're very shallow, that can be a bit of a pig. Um, usually the best thing to do is pop that out um, and just put a little bit, tiny little bit of super thin CA super glue and then get it back in. And then that will usually sort the problem out and uh, they'll be good. Uh, good to go obviously being this small you don't have to go crazy talking down bolts but um yeah that's all fairly straightforward so there's our kind of two main plates there and our battery impact plate so there's that and then if we lift up let's see what we've got in here a beta fpv card with user manual qr code thingy seems to be very popular and then we have mounting screws and nylon nuts pretty straightforward that looks like our battery laser cut battery grippies i guess these are our different thicknesses three and five mil battery impact foam as they say it's a very specific name for a bit of a very standard servo foam but yeah that's those laser cut and then we have a, a nice stitched beta fpv strap very nice do you like those and got cutouts for a load of arms i guess there's different sizes isn't there different wheelbases but um yeah there's our arms five mil and uh yeah no uh no chamfering but you know it doesn't really matter whether they're chamfered or not again the subject of great debate always um but yeah i can see why this is obviously going to be it's lovely and uh, strong stiff that excellent yeah hopefully this will be a nice strong build so the plan is we're going to build that up we're going to swap the flight controller into this pod into the halo pod and then i should just be able to take out these four screws and drop this whole vista pod uh straight onto this frame to test it out and see how it does and we should have a nice ultralight five inch frame so uh yeah let's do some building
okay there she is all together really <laughs> kind of strange looking but um quite cool at the same time um so there we have you see these five inch props with these little plastic inserts that go in here um so that they can adapt for either your kind of standard shaft size on a on a proper five inch motor or um the kind of micro mount so yeah that's uh inter interesting in between i guess but um We've got all the props on. We've got the halo pod on the top there, as you can see, 650 milliamp uh, high discharge 4S to run under it. Um, so yeah, I'd be really interested to see how this goes. Let's get a final weight with everything on there and see if we did actually manage to squeeze under 250 grams. Will we need to register this guy or not? Okay, here we go. Take your guesses. 246 grams. There we go. A five inch quad ultralight that does not need registering. That is pretty sweet. Looking forward to flying this. It'd be interesting to see how this does flying gently in terms of flight time as well. Very, very intrigued. But all in all, looks like a pretty tidy build. So, yeah, see you shortly.